and then slide the hips back. Let your arms come out in front. Let your forearms rest heavily on the floor and your hips heavily back toward your heels. <sighs> so if your chest is resting on your thighs, you might be giving yourself like a little massage of your quads that worked so hard and all of that. Couple more breaths. If you want another stretch of your triceps and this works for you, you can try bending your elbows, taking your arms overhead, and again, a little traction. Your elbows kind of stuck down to the floor. Head in between your hands, and then pull back a little bit. Reaching your fingertips down your back, getting a stretch into your triceps. And let your arms come out in front again. Come up onto your hands and knees. And if your wrists feel okay, then um, we're gonna do the uh, side plank. If your wrists don't feel okay, you'll do side plank down on your forearm. Actually, let's all do it on the forearm, unless it's uh, too much challenge for you. So if you're up on your wrist, it's a little easier because you're not so close to the floor. If you, coming down onto your forearm makes it too much for you, you'll bring your top leg out in front and give yourself a little support in the midline. Otherwise, you're on your right forearm. Your forearm is parallel to the short end of your mat and your stacked feet behind, or one foot's out in front, or your top leg, the left leg is out in the kickstand. So you can be working here, upper arm can be lifting up. If you want to look up, that's a little bit of a balance challenge. You can also play around with lifting the upper leg, really challenging your right side body to keep the integrity. You can play around with taking your arm forward, reaching your toes back, and then we'll come through the middle. So now your left arm will be on the floor and your right leg will be taking whatever position is appropriate for you so that you're not gripping and not able to breathe. Maybe looking up again. Arms parallel to each other now. A few more breaths here. Letting your knees come to the floor, hips come to the floor, sphinx pose again. Pull your chest through, lift your chin high. And then lowering down. One more time, breathing your way up. And back to downward dog. Try it with nice bent knees, lengthening your low back. Shake your head out. And then if you want to, let your heels come down toward the floor. So bring your right foot up to the front again. So we've done warrior two, warrior three, or warrior one. Now we're gonna do warrior three, which is a balance pose. And with your legs as tired as they might be feeling right now, going to be a little bit of a challenge, but that's what we're here for today, working on that building strike. So hop your toes in the back, out to the left a little bit, coming up, finding a crescent lunge, again, trying to create space between your frontal hip bone and your thigh bone, strengthening the back leg as well as the front, and then coming forward, tipping over, staring something straight down from your face, and breathing here. So try to keep your back leg active. The more firm it is, the less floppiness you've got to deal with. Balancing on your right leg. Keep your breath helping you. Filling up. Emptying slowly. Again, if your arms are tired out in front, you can bring them out to the side or to the back. If you can reach the floor, you have blocks. You can even take your hands down to something to help you with the balance. Maybe take a little weight out of your leg. If that's 
a useful thing. Seeing if you can stay with it a few more breaths. If you're still here and you're ready to come out, bend the front leg, reach back with your left foot again, back to crescent lunge. Circle your arms around. This time we'll come to the front of the mat. Fill up and empty out, folding over. And then rise up, breathing in. I'm feeling a huge difference between my right leg and my left leg right now. Exhale.